Our names will go down in history. Bob Dalton Almost everyone has heard of famous outlaws such as Jesse James and Billy the Kid, but these outlaws were just some of the many fighting the law. These outlaws never did the things they did alone, though. They formed gangs to break the law. One gang that often goes overlooked is the Dalton Gang, a gang that is responsible for many train and bank robberies in the Kansas and Oklahoma areas. The Dalton family of Coffeyville, Kansas was a very large family consisting of 15 children, 10 of which were boys, all brought about by their parents, Adeline Younger Dalton and James Lewis Dalton. At the beginning of their lives, the family lived a very normal and law-abiding life. In fact, the oldest brother, Frank Dalton, served as a deputy U.S. Marshal out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Frank would eventually be killed while serving a warrant on a horse thief in Indian Territory, which would open up the younger boys in the family to a harsh new world and change their outlook on the law forever. Despite their new point of view towards the law, Grattan Dalton was invited to become the U.S. Marshal for the Indian Territory. At the point of accepting this job, Grattan would name his younger brother, Bob, as his deputy. The oldest brother, Frank, had quite the reputation as a marshal of upholding the law, but this would be quite the opposite for the two younger brothers now in a position of power. Bob and Grattan had both begun to complain, saying they were being swindled out of fees they were owed to them by the administration. Although it is not clear whether the two brothers quit from their jobs as lawmen or were fired, the two did not last very long in these positions. Also, it came to be found out that while these two men were in these positions, that they had been involved in an array of crimes, including most prominently many instances of horse wrestling operations. After this, the boys would make enemies with law officials, such as their sworn enemy, Marshal Ed Short. Grattan would now head to California with his brother, Emmett. While in California, Grattan and Emmett would be involved in an attempted robbery of a Southern Pacific Express train. The two brothers would be met with gunfire from an express messenger and Grattan would be arrested. While being transferred from a county jail to state prison, Grattan would escape, though, and return with Emmett back to Kansas, where they would meet up with their brother, Bob. When returning to meet with Bob, Emmett and Grattan had found out Bob had already asked Bill Doolin, Dick Broadwell, black-faced Charlie Bryant, and Bill Powers to join an outlaw gang. With Grattan and Emmett now back with Bob and his newfound gang, they were ready to begin their new lives as outlaws. The gang's first real venture into their fight against the law was a raid of a colony of Missourians on Beaver Creek, where they surprised the colonists and stole eight or nine of their horses. Their next big job would involve something that they were all very familiar with, train robbing. When the train halted, Dick Broadwell and Black-Faced Charlie ran into the cab of the train, surprising the guard and disarming him. Grattan and Bill Doolin went and held up the express messenger, hoping to find a safe that supposedly held several thousand dollars. But much, much to their dismay, there was only a smaller safe containing two to three hundred dollars. Meanwhile, Bob, Emmett, and Bill Powers went through the train robbing all the passengers, and within 15 minutes, the train was on its way and the Dalton gang had fled with the disappointingly small sum that they got. After this train robbery and the capture of Blackface Charlie by the law, the gang would lay low for a while until their ultimate decision to return to their hometown of Coffeyville, Kansas, and rob two banks at the same time. This would be very courageous and daring feat, considering only a handful of bank robberies had been successful in the West during the frontier area. So hitting two banks at the exact same time would be nearly impossible to do. But on October 4th, 1892, the gang would make their way from Oklahoma, where they were staying, up to Coffeyville to attempt the robberies. Along the way, Bill Doolin noticed that his horse had a limp that would affect their getaway. So he claimed that he was going to steal another horse and that he would meet them at Coffeyville later. 
but he never showed and would not be a part of this robbery. Arriving to town with shoddy disguises that only involved fake beards, the gang was quickly recognized and the town members took up arms, knowing the banks were about to be robbed. Grattan, Bill Powers, and Dick Broadwell went into the Condome Bank and Bob and Emmett went into the First National Bank. A local merchant, Charlie Gump, saw Grattan pull a gun in the Condom Bank and ran through the town confirming everyone's suspicions. There go the Daltons. Even when in the banks, they would be noticed by their fellow hometown people. One man was reported saying, For goodness sakes, Bob? Emmett? What the hell are you boys up to now? With everyone now surrounding the bank with firearms, a gunfight ensued killing every member of the Dalton gang, except for Emmett, who was shot and captured by police and sentenced to life in prison, although he was re later released on parole after only 14 years. The, the Dalton gang would not end here, though. Bill Dolan and Bill Dalton, who were not in Coffeyville, would go on to form the Doolin-Dalton gang and continue to wreak havoc on the area until they were both shot by law enforcement a few years later. Although the Daltons may not be as widely known these days as Jesse James and his gang is, their name struck fear into the heart of the people on the frontier just the same. Their fame was so great in this area during their time that after Bill Dalton's death, people paid to see him, the last member of the great Dalton gang, in a glass-covered coffin. Their daring move to try and pull off the robbery of two banks at the same time gave them this fame and set them apart in history. This will make them a part of Kansas history forever.